Hey, how are you doing? This is Lee. I figure that I would do something a little bit different. Well, I'm a fan of the group Kiss. I've been a fan for quite a long time. I figured I would just give really quickly like a general rating of their albums. I'll include Double Platinum and the originals and the solo albums and a few of the live albums but that's because I heard them I'm not going to give my opinion on the symphony album because I haven't heard it and I'm not going to give my review on some of the greatest hits packages but I'll include Killers, but, so this is going to just be pretty much just me talking about what I think of Kiss albums. Okay, their first one is their self-titled album. I would give this one a strong nine. I am not the biggest fan of Firehouse, and... Yeah, I don't love Cold Gin either, but it's better than Firehouse, but otherwise it's a solid album, and I like everything else on it. Harder Than Hell, I'd give that one 7.5. I don't really like Got to Choose, I don't like Going Blind. And I'm not a big fan of Mainline. And those three songs, whenever I hear them on the album, they kind of really glare at me and they make the rest of the album not as good. But if you took away those three songs, it's pretty good album. And then Dress to Kill... I'm not the biggest fan of any of Gene's songs, but they're better than Going Blind off of Harder Than Hell, so they're okay songs. I don't think that there's anything really bad off of Dress to Kill. Paul's songs are spectacular. I love every song he did on it. And I love Getaway. That's my favorite Kiss song. The one thing that I don't love is the intro to Rock Bottom. If there was a way that I could get a version of Rock Bottom without the intro, I would do it. I can do it. I mean, I, I've, got, I've got Audacity, which is a music program, and I can download the song Rock Bottom and then just cut the solo and that's fine I can do that but I would like if I could find a version just without the solo I mean the beginning because that's the one draggy point I'm not a big fan of She but I do like it better than the intro to Rock Bottom I just think that it's not not with any like it's pointless. But anyway, Kiss Alive. I'd say eight point five. I don't listen to it a lot now, but I used to listen to it when I was home and just wanted to kick back and listen to a live Kiss album. It was cool. I do like Got to Choose on Alive, and I like Harder Than Hell better on Alive than I do on Harder Than Hell. So, yeah, some of the songs are better. So that's cool. I I do like the album. It's just that 
overall, when I want to listen to a Kiss album, I usually prefer just to listen to the studio stuff just because that's my preference. But... I, I do admit it's a pretty good album. It's just not one that I listen to a lot. So that's why I'm not rating it that high. The originals? That one... I thought it was cool because it had some different, like, uh, leaflets or information or posters or what, whatever. It was just, it was more for a collector just to say, hey, I got this. As an actual album collection, I, I, I really would give it a lower rating like maybe a five only because if you can get the original albums then the originals does seem like it's just a cash cow or you know I mean a trick to get you money but for a fan for a completist it's okay, but the only thing really different about that is the cover, which is a cool cover, but I mean, the actual original albums sound better too. They, they didn't really make it sound as dynamic and sound on the audio of the record when I had it. I won't say don't get it, I'm just saying it's for a completist. And then Destroyer, that was the first album that I bought from them. And the reason why was because that was the only studio album that they had in the store at that time. Otherwise, I would have wanted to get Dress to Kill first because that had rock and roll all night. Which I still love. And it's the song that got me into Kiss. But Destroyer is like Southern. I like I like Side 2 except for Beth. But everything else on Side 2 I think is great. Side one, it's fine. It's not as dynamic as I would have wanted. I mean, Detroit Rock City is an okay song, but I don't really love it. And God of Thunder, I like the demo better than the slowed down version. I'm not a big fan of it. Great Expectations, don't even get me started on how bad that song is. King of the Nighttime World is okay. But I think it could have been mixed a little bit better. So, side two, except for Beth, which isn't a song that I'll get sick after hearing it. It's just not my thing. But otherwise... Side 2 is great. Okay, Rock and Roll Over. I remember when I got that. I got that during Christmas, and the lights of the Christmas tree were red. And I got it for Christmas, and it was in red Christmas wrapping. Then when I opened it up, it was this like red and orange kind of looking album cover and it was like totally cool. I don't love I Want You. And I am not a fan greatly of Hard Luck Woman, but otherwise it's a pretty damn good album. I'm giving it a nine. And then Love Gun. 
Um, hmm. I don't love Shock Me. And I am not a big fan of Plaster Caster or Almost Human. But the rest of it is so good, I'm giving it a 9 too. I mean 9 also, not 9.2. And then the next one would be, well, they did solo albums. Ace Frehley's I'm Not a Fan of What's On Your Mind. I do not like New York Groove. I am not a fan of Fractured Mirror. Still, his album, because of great songs like Ozone and Speeding Back to My Baby and I'm in Need of Love, which are great songs, I'm giving it 8.8. Not quite on the level of Love Gun, but close. Paul, his solo album, the only songs that are really good on it are It's Alright and Love in Chains. And the rest of it's fine, but I have to give it a five. It's not that great. Gene. Uh, I like Burning Up with Fever and Living in Sin. So his album gets a three because those two songs are good. They're not wonderful, but they're they're good. I don't even really love Radioactive. I think it's a bland song compared to Got Love for Sale or Christine 16, which are absolutely fantastic. So yeah. I do like his album Asshole a lot better, even though that also has not that great stuff. Oh, I'm not going to talk about the solo albums that they did later. I'm only talking about the 78 solo albums. Anyway, um, Peter Chris, I like I'm Gonna Love You. I like Tossin' and Turnin'. I like That's the Sugar Papa Likes. I like Rock Me Baby. I like Hooked on Rock and Roll. His album gets a seven because half of it's good. I am not a big fan of anything else on it. A lot of people like I Can't Stop the Rain. I don't know why. I just don't like that kind of song. It's a sappy kind of crappy song. I'm sorry. For people who like that song, fine, but I, I don't... I can imagine being out in the rain and singing I Can't Stop the Rain while it's raining. And that would be pointless. And it would be pointless to hear it. Anyway, Dynasty, I give it an 8. I don't like Sure Know Something, and I'm not a big fan of X-Ray Eyes. But otherwise, solid good album all the way through. Ace's songs are wonderful. Save Your Love and Hard Times, and the cover of 2000 Man, absolutely great. I just don't like Sure Know Something and I don't like X-Ray Eyes. Sorry. And now, Double Platinum, I'll give it an 8. I think that it was kind of an odd mix of, you know, remixed songs that 
actually sound better when I hear them now. It's pretty cool. I don't mind it. You know, I don't even know whether or not I dislike Beth on it. I don't even know if Beth is on it. All I know is it's it's all right. It's not a, an essential album, but it's it's cool. Killers, I'd have to say, is five. I'd say the new songs and the mix of the old songs, and it could have been better. And Alive 2, mm, Alive 2 is a 7. It's okay, but it's not quite as good as Alive. I don't think Peter's drumming is quite as good on Alive 2 than it was on Alive. I'm sorry, that's just what I think. And now, hmm, Unmasked. Unmasked would be maybe 6.5. There's a, there's stuff I love and stuff I don't. <laughs> I really do like Ace's songs. I like Talk To Me. I like Three Sides, I mean Two Sides of the Coin. I like Torpedo Girl. I think they're great. Because you had to be around where I was. And a lot of cool women were wearing tucked-in shirts back then. The women who wore tucked-in shirts were the ones who went to my school. And when I daydreamed about them, the kind of daydream that I had was the kind of daydream that went to Ace's songs. You had to be there. It was cool stuff. People who don't like tucked-in shirts on women... If they think, oh, I don't like a tucked-in shirt on a woman. I like a woman who's really overweight and looks sloppy. Then you probably won't like, you know, Ace's songs. Because even though he doesn't mention it, it's like, hey, I have to tell you. Those songs were tailor-made for foxy women. I don't like your All That I Want at all. I don't like Shandy. I like Is That You. I like She's So European. I I don't want to even think about the other songs as far as whether I like them or not. But whatever I rated it already is what I rated it. Okay. The next album, The Elder. Mm-hmm. Five. And I say that because sometimes I think it's a one, sometimes I think it's an eight, and sometimes I think it's a five. I like the oath. I like I. I like Under the Rose. I kind of like Mr. Blackwell. And, hmm, I like only you. The rest of it is like filler. Even Ace's stuff, I'm, I'm not really a fan of it. And I hate the Odyssey. Okay. Creatures of the Night. The title track is not my thing at all. I really find that it was just overbearingly pompous and that ruined the rest of it for me but overall it's it's actually an eight i don't like creatures of the night the song i don't like i still love you but pretty much the rest of it's a solid good album so hey cool now, Lick It Up, oh, the only song that I have kind of a slight not liking to is On the Eighth Day, but even that's just a minor thing. 9.5, Lick It Up. Animalize, mmm, 
8 only because in time some of the songs are a little bit better than how I remember them. I'm not a big fan of I've Had Enough Into the Fire. I don't like Mark St. John's solo album. I mean, I mean solo on that song. Kind of sounds a little bit too classical. It, it's not my thing. And there's a few others that I don't love. But overall, it's okay. Asylum is, is better. It's also an 8. But... Um... I'm not a big fan of, of... I think Secretly Cruel is on it. And, um... But... I liked... Double Virgo's version of Secretly Cruel. But, overall... No, I don't really like King of the Mountain. I'm sorry. I don't like these pompous songs where the chord changes are these weird kind of minor chord changes that are based on fake classical music that Paul does. And he puts a big beat and a big intense thing to it. But otherwise, the song is just blah so I don't like King of the Mountain and I don't like Secretly Cruel but the rest of the album I do so 8 the next album Crazy Nights mm, 7 I hate that song Crazy Crazy Nights I hate it and there's maybe a one or two other songs I don't like either, but some of it is good. It's just that Crazy Crazy Nights as a song is so glaringly bad that it makes people think the rest of the album is bad. When in truth, it's not horrible, it's just that song makes the rest of the album seem horrible. Hot in the Shade? I'll, I'll say... 7.9, almost an 8. I like Rise to it. I like... I don't know if Boomerang is on it or not. I, I think it is. But I like I like a lot of it. Some of it I might not like as much as some other songs. But I don't think it's their worst album. I think that some of it's pretty good. better than Psycho Circus. I I don't remember a lot of the songs, so I'm not going to tell you which ones I really like. But you get the idea. So, Hot in the Shade, and then the next one... Hmm, I'm going through this by memory. I'm not looking at any Wikipedia page, so so please bear with me. The next album would be... Uh, hmm, yeah, Revenge. Eight. I find that some of the songs are kind of derivative of other big-name songs that they have quotes from their songs from, but... I don't think there's anything that I really, really dislike on it. I think it's actually an okay album. All of the songs are decent. I'm not going to say that I love any of them, except Heart of Chrome, which I think is really, really good. But other than that, I don't even love Domino. I'm not even the biggest fan of Unholy, even though it's fine. I like it, but I don't love it. But yeah. Okay. Now, Carnival of Souls. I'll, even though I don't love everything on it, I'm giving it a 9.5. I, 
because the best songs are some of the best songs KISS has ever done. And I'm talking every single fucking song Paul Stanley did, even though he didn't really want to do that album, he came through. The only song I love of Gene's is Hate. The rest of Gene's songs are disposable, and I wish Gene had stayed off of the album and let Paul do it, even though it was Gene's idea. But if I were to include what I thought about Gene's songs, I would give it a seven. But Paul's songs are a 20, and that's why I'm giving it a 9.5, because his songs make Gene's songs almost sound better because, you know, if if you're a nerd who's with a really hot fashion model, you're not going to look better because of your looks, but you're going to look better because you're with someone hot. In this case, Gene's songs are like the nerd who look better with Paul's fashion model stuff. That's the only way I can describe it. It's kind of weird, but that's that's the only way I can describe it. Um, hmm. Okay, Alive 3. I only remember that I heard it once, and I thought it was a 9. I'm not going to say why. Um, hmm. What other Grazed Hits stuff do I want to talk about? I don't really want to talk about any more Grazed Hits stuff. I'm just going to go with the rest of the regular albums or whatever it is. Um, Psycho Circus. Uh, shit. Six. I think Gene's songs are great. I think Paul's songs, except for Psycho Circus, and I Finally Found My Way, which I Finally Found My Way is horrible, and Psycho Circus is okay, but not great. But Gene's songs are good. I don't love Ace's songs. Did I say six? Um... Yeah, it's not a completely terrible album, but I, I don't love it. And, okay. Now for Sonic Boom. Up, uh, eight. I'm giving it an eight. Because a lot of the songs are a solid groove. They're not maybe... After a while, it's kind of like Paint the Numbers Kiss. But it's Paint the Good Numbers. It's pretty damn good. It's more like Old Kiss than I would have thought. It's actually kind of cool. There's maybe a song or two that Gene does that I don't like as much as Paul's. But overall, it's a good album. And then Monster, eh, six. There's a few songs I like, but overall, I think it's just more like... They're... they're trying to be like a more heavy Matchbox 20 or a more heavy Avril Lavigne. They're trying to be a little new. I don't love it. And I'm not going to get into the one song which was a ripoff of another song which was a hell of a lot better. If you want to ask me about it personally, I can maybe tell you on Messenger or something, but I don't want to talk about it here. But I will say, I I am not a big fan of it, but I don't really, really hate it. The rest of what they did, whatever they did, I, I don't want to review it. I'm, I'm done. Okay, anyway, that's been my KISS overall stuff.
take care and bye.